Good afternoon. I'm going to stand as long as I can before my appeal is given. Um, so today I'm going to be presenting on considerations to be used in determining whether to submit an ANDA or a 505 B2 application. And this is based on a guidance that we issued, that same name, that published in October. Um, there are four different routes for the two broad categories of drug applications under the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. The first is the standalone NDA submitted under Section 505B1 and approved under Section 505C. Second is the 505B2 NDA submitted under 505B2, hence its name, and approved under 505C. Third is the ANDA submitted and approved under 505J. And finally, the petitioned ANDA submitted under 505J2C and approved under 505J. Uh, an ANDA is an application for a duplicate of a previously approved drug product, which is the reference listed drug or the RLD. An ANDA relies on FDA's finding that the RLD is safe and effective. This application contains information to demonstrate that the proposed drug product is the same as the RLD with respect to the active ingredient or ingredients, dosage form, mode of administration, strength, previously approved conditions of use, and labeling, with certain exceptions. Uh, in addition, an ANDA contains sufficient information to demonstrate bioequivalence to the RLD. And an ANDA may contain certain differences from an RLD as long as investigations are not necessary to establish safety and effectiveness. A 505B2 NDA contains full reports of investigations of safety and effectiveness, where at least some of the information required from appro for approval comes from studies not conducted by or for the applicant and for which the applicant has not obtained a right of reference or use. 505B2 application may rely on FDA's finding of safety and or effectiveness to the extent that the proposed drug shares characteristics with the listed drugs. This application includes a bridge between the proposed drug product and each listed drug that's referenced uh, to, so, uh, to demonstrate that such reliance is scientifically justified. Sorry. So there are certain regulatory and scientific considerations for applicants to consider when determining which of the abbreviated approval pathways is the appropriate path for their proposed drug product. So first we're going to hit the regulatory considerations. If an applicant's proposed drug product is a duplicate of an RLD and eligible for, for approval as an ANDA, they should submit an ANDA. FDA will refuse to file a B2 application for a drug that is a duplicate of a listed drug and should be submitted as an ANDA. If FDA approves a pharmaceutical equivalent to a proposed product before a B2 application is submitted, meaning that there is an RLD to reference in an ANDA, FDA will refuse to file the application. If FDA approves a duplicate product after a 505B2 application is submitted, but before that application is approved, the application that was submitted would remain eligible for approval as a B2 application. And for reference, uh, pharmaceutical equivalents, like Kun just said, are products that contain the same active ingredient, dosage form, route of administration, and strength. A, petition, a prospective applicant may submit a suitability petition to FDA requesting permission to submit an ANDA that differs from an RLD in the route of administration, dosage form, strength, or one different active ingredient in a fixed combination drug product. An ANDA citing a suitability petition that has not been approved, meaning the petition is pending or has been denied, will not be received for review. FDA will approve a suitability petition unless the safety and effectiveness of the proposed change cannot be adequately evaluated without data from investigations that exceed what may be required for an ANDA, or the petition is for a drug product for which a pharmaceutical equivalent has been approved in an NDA, including a B2 application, that referenced the same listed drug. Uh, so the final regulatory consideration discussed today is the bunding policy. And this situation covers multiple drug products that may not all be submitted in an ANDA. An applicant may seek approval for multiple drug products containing the same active ingredient or ingredients when some of these products would qualify for approval as an ANDA under the 505J pathway and others through the B2 pathway 
by submitting one 505B2 application for all the proposed drug products. So the next few set of slides, we're going to go through the scientific considerations. Both an ANDA and a B2 application may include additional information to support approval of the proposed drug product. Limited confirmatory studies may be acceptable in an ANDA, provided that the purpose is not to establish safety and effectiveness. If the safety and effectiveness of a proposed drug product must be established by investigations, these investigations go beyond the scope of a limited confirmatory study that may be in an ANDA. Section 505J of the Act generally requires that a proposed generic drug product demonstrate that it is the same as the RLD with respect to the active ingredient or ingredients. If the active ingredient in a proposed drug product cannot be demonstrated to be the same as the active ingredient in the RLD by using information and data that may be submitted in an ANDA, going back to that last slide on limited confirmatory studies, the proposed drug product should not be submitted for approval as an ANDA. So I want to note that FDA does have broad discretion to determine whether an ANDA applicant has submitted information sufficient for the agency to reasonably conclude that the proposed drug product's active ingredient is the same as that of the RLD. So as stated earlier, there are certain differences uh, between a proposed drug product in ANDA and its RLD that are permissible. An ANDA with certain differences as permitted in the implementing regulations must include information regarding the identity and quantity of all active and inactive ingredients of the proposed drug product, a characterization of any permitted differences between the formulations of the proposed drug product and the RLD, and a justification demonstrating that the safety and effectiveness of the proposed drug product is not adversely affected by these differences. A B2 application should be considered if the proposed drug product contains changes to its formulation that are not permissible in an ANDA. For example, a proposed parenteral drug product that contains an additional inactive ingredient not present in the RLD that cannot be considered an exception excipient, and a proposed drug product that contains a novel excipient, meaning an excipient that has not been used in an FDA-approved drug product previously the safety of which cannot be established without clinical testing. So as noted earlier, an ANDA contains sufficient information to demonstrate bioequivalence to the RLD. An application for a drug product where the rate and or extent of absorption are different from the 505J standards for bioequivalence may be submitted as a B2. A B2 NDA is not appropriate for a drug product that should have been submitted under the ANDA pathway but failed to meet all those 505J requirements. For example, FDA would generally refuse to file a B2 application if the proposed drug product is a duplicate of a listed drug but is unintentionally less bioavailable and fails to demonstrate bioequivalence to the listed drug. Regarding conditions of use, an ANDA must include a statement that the conditions of use prescribed, recommended, or suggested in the labeling for the proposed drug product have been previously approved for the RLD. If an applicant has made changes to a proposed drug product such that the proposed labeling for that drug product does not meet the previously approved conditions of use, the application cannot be approved as an ANDA. So another scientific consideration is the existence of a device constituent. A proposed generic drug device combination product may have a device constituent that has some differences in design from the RLD. So before an application is submitted, we recommend that prospective applicants review the guidance highlighted here, the comparative analysis guidance. Okay, the last item for consideration is labeling of the proposed drug product. Certain differences in labeling between the generic drug product and the RLD may be appropriate due to the fact that generic drug products in the RLD are produced or distributed by different manufacturers. These differences can include the expiration date, formulation, bioavailability or pharmacokinetics, labeling revisions made to comply with current FDA labeling re regulations, and emission of an indication or other aspect of labeling protected by patent or exclusivity. 
an ANDA is not appropriate if the proposed drug product would have a new indication or a new dosing regimen as compared to the RLD. The differences between the products are such that they would require investigations to establish the safety and or effectiveness of the proposed product or necessitate such significant labeling differences that the labeling no longer satisfies the same labeling requirement. So if you need assistance from FDA in making this determination, we recommend you contact OGD or OND, the Office of New Drugs, as appropriate. So for example, if an applicant is developing a product that is intended to have the same active ingredient conditions of use, route of administration, dosage form strength, and labeling, as the RLD is proposing a non-clinical study program and has questions about qualification as an ANDA, we should contact OGD. An applicant is developing a product that has a different active ingredient, condition of use, through administration, dosage form, strength, or labeling than the listed drug. Or is proposing a clinical study program and has questions about submission through the B2 pathway, you should contact the Office of New Drugs. And there's more information about how to contact each office of guidance. And last but not least, um, some additional information on when a controlled correspondence is appropriate and when the pre-ANDA meeting pathway is discussed a little bit earlier is your best bet. 